me now. Of course, you know, I, I ask him to come to my lap, and he's all like, no! <laughs> uh, hi, sweethearts. It's Rowan again, and, oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. And this is Murnau. Yes, named after the director. At a uh, popular quest of all of two people who were uh, responding to um, the uh, the question I put out at the end of my um, diatonic accordion. People wanted to know uh, what Elder Goth is all about and all of that. And there was a question posed by uh, fellow Michigander, the Argyle Dinosaur, and they... Uh, I will get to their question at the at the end. Not your end. Not your rear end. I have three cats. I have three cats, but the last several videos, you guys only see the one cat. Because he's the one who's small enough to fit in my lap. Because Phoebe's chubby and Nigel is... Nigel's about twice this long. And, uh, the term Elder Goth, as best as I've been able to research originated on Usenet, on specifically the alt-gothic newsgroup. If you are nowhere near as old as I am, and that sounds like a foreign language to you, let me bring you up to speed. So, uh, before the days when social media ruled the internet, the internet was, uh, let's see, before Facebook there was MySpace, which, you know, Facebook outright copied right at the beginning, but uh, it took off because MySpace had a lot of downtime. But uh, before MySpace, there was LiveJournal, and I was on LiveJournal. I was probably one of the first goths to make a transition from Usenet to LiveJournal and actually be kind of a big deal for about a year, and then, uh, and then I was a little asshole, and but... At the same time, I was an asshole when you're 21, and it's a little bit more socially acceptable, so uh, thankfully I outgrew that. And uh, But yeah, um, Usenet. Usenet was a... Uh, 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 it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe because it was a, it's a system of news groups, and I would liken it... I would say the closest um, social website, you know, of the major ones that I've seen replicate the feel of how Usenet operated is probably Reddit. Um, so there were all of these various topics that people would discuss, and um, with you know, and with the term news group, we would often discuss you know news about X topic. So alt got dot gothic, you know, you would put that in the. Uh, it was not a centralized site. You had to read it in a newsfeed um, reader sort of thing. It was, yeah, you know, like you could open up the uh, the Outlook client before uh, Microsoft moved uh, Hotmail to Outlook.com. Uh, there was the Outlook client, and, you know, you would be able to load your news groups in the lower um, thing was how I set mine up. And I'm being very specific with my language here because... <laughs> because I'm just old enough to remember what this is, but just young enough that I was using it a much shorter time than some people and immediately forgot the terms. Like on Reddit, you've got the various little subs, and uh, there was a little bit more of a process to starting a new use group on, um, on Usenet and everything, uh, but it's like there was... There was at some point, there was very little screening process because, uh, as you can find in Google's archives of the, uh, and they still, um, the Usenet groups still function under the Google Groups, um, moniker now, but it's not quite the same, but you will still, you know, but it's, like, people don't use it as much as they did back in the days when Usenet ruled the social internet. And, you know, but you'll still find things like alt.swedishchef.bork.bork.bork. And this was a thing, you know, uh, alt.icelandicnymph.bjork.bjork.bjork. Like, uh, this, th these were things. These were news groups. Like, don't... I am not making this up. <laughs> and another thing I'm not making up is Elder Goth, 
uh, was a term first uh, recorded anyway on Usenet, alt.gothic newsgroup. And at the time, uh, Elder Goth was intended to describe uh, people who were around during the first major wave of, um, of Goths, basically. You know, like, before Goth was Goth, about 1979 to about 1984-ish, thereabouts, in this n nebulous, you know, sort of thing, like, before it was called Gothic Rock, um, you know, before the Leeds sound of, you know, like, the Sisters of Mercy, Red Lori, Yellow Lori, and March of Violets, um, you know, got really sort of big. Uh, you know, people who were around during that first wave, maybe up through, you know, later in the 80s, of course, you know, um, you know, Use, Usenet first launched in the late 80s, and I want to say Alt-Gothic first showed up, I want to say 1989. Yes, the internet has been around much longer than a lot of people realize, but I want to say Alt-Gothic first showed up around 1989, maybe 1990. I might be a little off. I wasn't there the whole time. And the problem with defining Elder Goths as only those of, you know, like the first wave, so, you know, we're talking, you know, 78 through 87 at the late, you know, at the, you know, with the 87 it being the latest. And the problem with defining Elder Goth that way is that it's a term that has a built-in expiration date, because as much as it pains us all to admit at times, the Goths from that first wave are not going to be with us forever. So, I want to say around 98, 99, I first started seeing people defining Elder Goth a bit more broadly, and this was uh, because around 88, uh, 98, 99, all over the news was, you know, these goth teenagers, especially the whole Columbine thing. So, goth was, you know, even more so than before, was regarded as, you know, this, uh, this, 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 this cult of troubled teens. So, you know, if you were a goth over the age of 30, you were automatically an elder. You know, you, this was something you were expected to, you know, outgrow and move on with your life, you know, and get all boring and make lots of babies, like, after you get out of college or something. And it was Usenet, so most people on the internet at the time were college students. Uh, or working in tech, which was where we first get the term cyber goth, as, you know, as meaning a goth who works in the tech industry, but then it, there was the crossover with the cyber rave scene, I want to say, um, around 98, 99, and cyber goth became a thing unrelated to the tech industry, but that's another story for another time. Uh, on the other hand, I have a bit more nuanced definition of Elder Goth. It is no longer some a goth who is still a goth after the age of 30 or 35. I see 35 a lot, or I see 35, you know, as being the minimum age for an Elder Goth a lot more these days than I see 30. Um, I see 40 every once in a while, but generally it seems to be 35 now if people are, you know, defining it a bit more loosely. Um, you know, than the, you know, original, original definition. And, um, so I have a bit more of a nuanced definition. And a reason I've got a bit more of a nuanced definition than simply years, you know, old on this planet, <laughs> that was a very awkward phrasing. The reason I do this is because I am also a part of the pagan community, and specifically I am... I have come to paganism at least this time around. I've I've been interested off and on since I was twelve. I yeah, twenty-five. I started taking, you know, paganism a bit more seriously, and I got into it through the um polytheist reconstruction uh, movement within paganism. If you're not sure what paganism means, I'm gonna try and define it a little bit more concisely than I did Usenet and news groups. Right, Kitty? So in simplest terms, pagan is just kind of a dump term. It's kind of a catch-all phrase for somebody who practices a religion that predates Christianity or, you know, is somehow inspired by a pre-Christian spirituality. 
So Wicca would be pagan because um, it it does incorporate elements of a poorly researched Celtic reconstruction. That's that's a whole discussion for another video. But more, but it is generally a new religious movement, uh, no older than about 1938 is the oldest we've been able to, you know, trace the origins of Wicca. Um, but also uh, Hellenic Reconstruction, which I was a part of, and in some circles might still, you know, people would probably still recognize my name as being of moderate importance, even though I've barely published anything. As a reconstructed polytheist, you are highly recommended to go to the source. This meant we spent a lot of time researching things, or just uh, practicing based off other people's research that, you know, they would compile and put on blogs and uh, uh, email lists, because we were still using those for a good few years after most people generally stopped. As somebody once said to me, anybody can practice witchcraft for about 25 years or longer, but it takes a certain kind of witch to truly be an elder of their tradition. And don't ask me who first said that to me, because I have forgotten. It might also be paraphrased from something I actually read instead. And so to say that, you know, anybody can, you know, just put in the years of doing a thing, but it takes somebody of a special ability to really be an elder in their tradition. That has stuck with me for so long, and it has come to shape my understanding of what to expect of somebody who refers to themselves as an elder goth. And I do that uh, occasionally, not as much as uh, I refer to other people as an elder goth, and but I do like to think that I meet at least, you know, to some extent, the criteria that I use for defining uh, who is an elder goth and, and what they mean to the goth subculture. Uh, so, an elder goth, I think I'm going to go with, you know, a lot of people using the later definition of elder goth as, you know, and most people I say, see saying 35, you know, would be the minimum, you know, cutoff for being an elder goth, quote-unquote. Uh, and I will say, okay, you're at least 35 years old. I would also add to that and say that you have been a goth for at least 15 years. As in, you are a fan of the music and the arts and, you know, the literature and the films, and you are active in the community in some way, you know, whether you just regularly go to concerts and galleries and, you know, you go and, you know, you've read all the Sandman books, and I've got a, <laughs> I've got an, I, I, I gotta tell you all about, you know, how comic books, you know, shaped 90s goth at some point. You know, you've read all the books, you've watched all the films, um, you have nuanced, you know, opinions about Nancy and, you know, and Lydia and Wednesday and all that. So you have put a good 15 years into the subculture. And like the um, pagan and witchcraft elders, you have a, a deep interest in nurturing the younger generation who will come after you, and an interest in maintaining the oral and written and recorded histories of those who came before you and, you know, helped shape goth into what it is. So, basically, to be an elder goth, you are a keeper of the culture. And a lot of pagans will sometimes, you know, romanticize, um, you know, certain roles within, you know, our religions. So, who would then qualify as an elder goth and amongst my favorites on goth YouTube? So... I have a shortish list. There are so many goths on YouTube who are in their 30s, which I was actually very pleasantly surprised to see, 
and not only in their 30s, but act close enough to their age that I would highly recommend them. But then there are some where I'm not quite sure where in their 30s. So if I love and adore you and I left you off somehow, even though you meet the final two out of the three requirements, it's only because I don't know how old you are. <laughs> It's only honest. That's that's it. It's because I don't know how old you are. So I'll have a little. I'll, I also want to put a little honorable mention for a couple of those people who are in this weird area where I don't quite know how old you are. Because I don't want to. <laughs> because I don't want to see, make it sound like anybody is you know more favored or another. I'm going to go in descending order from about how old you are. And with one of these and with one of these ladies, I'm just taking a stab at this because that's that's just what I you know, I know about how old you are. <laughs> and you know, you never la ask a lady her age, right? So the one I know is definitely the oldest would be the kilted goth. Um he is in his 70s. He said so in a recent enough video from the last couple months, I want to say. So he is in his seventies. Like he is a grandfather himself. I think he's mentioned being a great grandfather. You know, biologically, uh, as f you know, if if we, I, I said in a comment earlier today that you know all us freaks is family, and if I were to continue with that, uh, he is definitely as has he said one of his one of his subscribers once said you know he is he's kind of like the kindly old granddad of, you know, the, you know, of the goth community, especially on YouTube. He's, he's got this very, uh, he's got this, he's very soft-spoken. He's from the UK. I don't remember exactly where. I want to say his accent is a bit northern to my ear, but I'm not sure. And he's very soft-spoken. He has so many stories about his life, and he does ramble a bit, which is, which, it's very endearing, it's in a, in a very endearing way, and he's got these stories about his life, and he's got this, this wisdom and wit, and sometimes he can be very funny, like, sometimes you're not even expecting him to make a joke about a thing, and then he says it, and it hits you for a second, and then it strikes you as the funniest thing you've you've seen or heard, because some of them are visual, too. That that took me for a loop the first time I saw it. And he's just so sweet and so kind, and so, and like I said, he's just, um, it's just so nice and relaxing to, you know, just hear him share his life. And he's, you know, he's a bit more, he's a, he's a bit more, I want to say, you know, a bit of a, you know, vlogger and video diary kind of thing, but he, he gives advice to people. Uh, he'll often go through, um, uh, records and little, um, charity shop finds, you know, that he brought in, and, uh, he and I were having a discussion about, uh, PVC glue in the comments in one of his videos, uh, because he does, uh, crafts as well, and, uh, you don't see it, um, you don't really see it called PVC glue in the States, at least not that I've seen, uh, you usually see it under the brand name Mod Podge, and sometimes, like, Michael's... I think Michael's has a store-branded version, but I, they don't... I, I think they just call it, you know, craft glue or something. Uh, next oldest, and I, I'm only... Like I said, I'm just taking a stab at this. Please don't be offended, ma'am. <laughs> uh, or, miss, I, I, I don't want to offend... Well, you're from Texas. Everybody's ma'am or sir, no matter how old you are. Uh, <laughs> I've probably given her away. It is uh, Skullgirl... I am not quite sure how old she is, but I do know she is between my age and the Kilted Goth. That is what I know. <laughs> um, uh, Skullgirdle, uh, her, her current channel that she, that she mostly does now is uh, Skullgirdle R.I.P. I think that's all one word. It'll be in the description box. And she has such a passion for the music that just floors me. I'm a DJ, and she makes me, like, not intentionally, of course, but she just makes me feel bad about myself and my abilities as a DJ and lifelong record collector that she just has such a passion to stay on top of the music. And, and she does. Like, 
she doesn't just sit there pitching old bands at people, you know, bands that haven't even put out an album since she left high school. You know, she stays on top of the new music so thoroughly, and I'm just in awe of this woman, and, and, uh, and, and, and miss, if you ever want to DJ for my, uh, for WFKU, I will absolutely put in a word for you to, uh, to the station manager, and he will give you whatever shift you want, I'm sure. Uh, hi! Hello! Do you want a shift on WFKU? No? Then go be a kitty. Uh, but yeah, she, she, her, that is, that is her passion, is the music, and like I said, I am in awe, and if you are young, especially if you're younger than myself, I'll be 39 in July, if you are young and you're interested in goth music and you want to know where to start out, you know, with old bands or new bands, go to her, go to her. She, she knows, she knows, and... <laughs> And she is she is there for you and all of your music related needs. Uh, like myself, she's not as much, you know, hung up on like how exactly to categorize X sound or Y. Like I see some people on Reddit doing all the time, right, Kenny? Yeah, you silly people on Reddit, yes you are. But you know, she understands. Like you know, sometimes people want to hear, you know. Okay, well, that's post punk, or you know, and rather than new wave, and it's like you know, she she goes. I I gotta get the impression that sometimes she'll just like go along and get along with these terms, but at the same time, I also wonder if she's like picking up on some idiosync idiosyncrasies on things like that that I'm not quite getting. But uh, her uh, her music reviews are second to none on you know amongst YouTube's goth community. Just if you haven't already subscribed to her, you have to now. Pause my video, go watch all of her music reviews, and then come back. Are you back? Probably, because that's how internets work, right? Next in line, um, she is about my age, same year, if I, if I recall correctly from stuff she's said, uh, would be Angela Benedict. Uh, she is just kind of this, like, all-encompassing, um, like, her, uh, kind of like a time capsule in a way of, uh, 90s goth, especially, uh, the, uh, the, the New York area club scene. She knows this stuff. This is, this is her, this is, this is her life's breath, is, uh, is 90s goth, is, as a Cemetery Confessions podcast, um, uh, Skullgirl went, and uh, Angela were both on an episode of uh, Cemetery Confessions one time, and Skullgirl described a Angela Benedict as looking like the quintessential '90s goth, you know, with the with the long straight black hair and you know the the slinky little dresses. Whereas Skullgirl is very much '80s goth, where the differentiation between you know like where does you know punk end and goth begin that. You know, that is very much her uh, Skullgirl's look. So, Angela Benedict, like I said, she... 90s goth is her thing, and apparently she comes up in, like, in the first page of image search results for 1990s goth. That is how much of a, you know, this is her thing. And she will give you the rundown on the fashion, and she will share um, little fashion videos. And the thing that I like about her fashion videos is, okay, first off, it very seldom feels like you're being advertised to for 10 to 15 minutes. That's another thing, is she keeps them a lot shorter than some people do. But that's just my preference. And secondly, is she has said before in her videos that she likes to curate these, uh, these little, um, you know, fashion videos that she'll do for, you know, brand new clothes by looking at what would have looked very much in place with how, you know, actual goths in the 90s, you know, who, you know, teenage goth kids in the 90s would have been dressing. And she does that very well. She also likes to keep it... She also likes to keep it at what a 90s goth teenager would have been able to afford, too. 
you know, just to ma drive the point home to, you know, young people who are genuinely interested that you do not have to, you know, sell a kidney to afford, you know, beautiful, well-made or well-made enough uh, gothic clothing items that, you know, you can, you know, shop at, you know, these, you know, budget little online outlets and, you know, still come away with some pretty snazzy outfits. Uh, my only thing is, um, recently I have not seen quite as many videos about music as I did from her when I first started watching, but, you know, people go through these little cycles with their own uh, YouTube um, topics various, a lot of times, like, you know, sometimes you'll just see a barrage of things from Lindsay Ellis talking about Disney, and then she'll be off Disney for, you know, nine months and doing other things, and then it's like, Disney month again, so, you know, this is maybe, like, where she's at in the cycle of things, but she also does, you know, stay on top of new bands and will uh, give out recommendations very easily to, you know, people interested in, like, oh, what new bands are out, and, you know, she'll be like, oh, here, here's a nice little list for you. Uh, she does try and stay, you know, and all three of the people that I've just mentioned do try and stay as active in the comments. Oh, I went out of order. I also wanted to recommend... Uh, and this is, here's, she's probably going to be really, really flattered by the fact that I went out of order here, because <laughs> I know she is somewhere between Angela Benedict's age and Skullgirl's age. Uh, she recently turned 46, that's how I do know how old she is, and how I know that she is older than Angela Benedict and myself, but, you know, still, like, um, you know, depending on who's telling, who's giving you the generational charts... Um, Angela and I are either very, very late Gen X or the very earliest millennials. Um, whereas, uh, Gothic Soulflower is the number four that I wanted to list. Very much Gen X. She just turned 46 years old a couple days ago. Uh, I know some people found me from her because she gave me a shout out on, um, her most recent live stream, and I am very grateful again. And... She, one of my favorite videos from her is, you know, how many goth bands does it take to be a goth? And I love her answer. And if you have not seen that video, go watch it. I, I should link that individually in the description below, just so you have no excuse not to, you know, say you found it. And I love her answer, because her answer to that question is very true on so many levels. And she's got another tone that is very conversational, much like uh, the Kilted Goth and Skullgirdle. And I'd say Angela Benedict has a very conversational tone as well, but it's it's different. Like, yeah, they do all, you know, sit and talk to you like they're talking to a friend. Uh, but uh, uh, I love how uh, Goth Soulflower, she, you know, does like her little uh, chatty... Um, vloggy time kind of updates. Uh, she's done makeup videos where it's clear that she's just having a bit of a laugh about it. Uh, there's a makeup video I really liked. Uh, a few months ago she did, maybe. Um, you know, trying a, uh, a white face makeup look, you know, with the, uh, with that heavy, uh, white pancake. <laughs> oh, that's so many of us did in the 90s because we were stupid. I don't know, that's, that's a look that Unless you're going for something explicitly theatrical, it looks good on very few people. <laughs> and, um, so those would be my top four of YouTube's Elder Goths. Like, I'm not even anywhere close to them. Like, not just in content produced or audience, you know, obtained, but just, like, you know, like, not by the amount of, not by the co quantity of my content, but by the quality. It's like... I don't know. I wish I could hold a candle to any four of them as far as, like, being topical and all of that goes. So, I um, I also want to give a shout-out to those I am not quite sure are old enough yet. And like I said, my, my minimum age would be 35. Uh, I am not quite sure how old Dorian, a.k.a. of Herbs and Altars, I want to say they recently turned 34. But I might be remembering an older video. Uh, they're non-binary, identified gender. There's so much personality. 
on their videos. They just have this enormous personality, but at the same time seem very warm and sweet, and apparently this is kind of a kind of uh, misleading if you go by, you know, what they say in, like, comments and on Facebook and stuff, where they seem just kind of, like, you know, professing being a little bit on the shyer side, but they just seem so gregarious and warm, and just... And they've just got so many stories about their experience being a teen, you know, being, you know, a goth in their late teens and early 20s, around um, a few years after me. I know they're a little bit younger than me. Uh, so, like, late 90s, early noughts, uh, they, you know, one of, one of their more, po um, more watched videos in, you know, recent months has been about the time... Uh, I see this come up in my recommended a lot when I'm watching them, and I'm like, I've seen this video like four times already. How many more times are you going to recommend it to me? Uh, the night the goth club burned down, and they've just got all of these little anecdotal stories, and they'll do like little vlogs at a concert where you know you've got little clips from the band, and they are just living their life, and you know they've been through a lot. They've been through a lot, and they're very open about how. They have been through so much and have come out of it so strong, too. And, you know, but again, you know, they love to, you know, inform and share these stories and share this history uh, so warmly. And, um, and another person who I know is not quite old enough to make my list yet would be uh, Jess in King. Uh, I think they prefer they, but I think they are also okay with she. Uh, somebody else who identifies as generally non-binary as far as gender goes, uh, they are also just, they seem very, very sweet and very warm-hearted, and it's clear that they are also very passionate about the music, much like our girl Skullgirdle. And uh, they have, they love, they've been focusing a lot on the black experience and contributions that um, black people have made to goth music and new wave music and punk music and that nebulously defined post-punk music. And again, this is clear that this is a passion of theirs and it shows and they're so excited. And much like myself, they've got these janky-ass little, um, little videos that's clearly shot from a webcam and edited together, you know, as best as they can all by them themselves and... You know, and I love it. I love it. I love that. And they've totally told people, you know, like, look, I just do this by myself. If you want to make a video, just go and do it. You learn it as you go along. That's the best way to learn how is to just do it. And and, and that's another thing. It's like I know they're in their earlier 30s. I want to say they're maybe a year or two younger than uh, Dorian. But uh, But Jess is just always there to, you know, like make these, you know, give this advice to people even younger than they are, and that is a huge, huge plus to the to the community. And I see, like in the next few years, both you know Dorian and Jess, you know, will be you know fully fledged elders if Dorian isn't already. <laughs> but I think you're young. <laughs> it just warms my almost forty year old heart to just see people. Just even just a few years behind me, just already going on what I see as the right path toward, you know, building this community of, you know, loving and caring and nurturing elders who want to, you know, uh, not only um, invite young people to come along and be interested and, you know, participate, but to stick around and be our beautiful, fabulous, freaky family. Right? Mwah. So, there's my, you know, top six choices, you know, four bona fide elder goths who are absolutely my favorites on YouTube. And, you know, two others who I think are very well on their way. If you know any other elder goths on YouTube who others definitely should check out in addition to everybody else I've listed... Feel free to leave their Earl in the comments. I, um, please add a comment with that as well. Like, you know, like, 
type something along with the link or it might get tagged as spam and I might not see it right away. So, you know, just tell us who they are in the comments and let's uh, talk a bit more and share our favorite elders. Elders should, you know, feel more than welcome to share their stories in the comments and everything. And as I tend to wrap things up, Bats and kisses, and I love you all so much, and please do take care of yourselves. Let's, uh, let's just have a much, you know, a, a very nurturing and loving and, you know, family of a community, and, um, and, again, take care of yourselves and your kitties, or doggies if you've got them. I like dogs, but I like dogs like I like children. I like to send them home at the end of the day, so they're not my problem anymore. <laughs> but yeah, let's just have a, let's just, you know, let's, let's all be, you know, fabulous, freaky family with so much fur and fluff. Wait, oh, what, am I annoying you now? Do I embarrass you? All right, well, again, bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and I do love you, and goodbye. Murnau has a fan club. There was a there was an Instagram I did maybe a month ago. I'm in the bathtub and I'm listening to her her despair and Murnau comes up out of nowhere and decides he's going to be in the video now and I tagged the band and <laughs> I think it's their singer. He's get, he's like the president of Murnau's fan club and it's getting to Murnau's head.